Hey everyone, Hans Schaff here from Cottages at Pine Lake here, Go Tiny Be Free, and I'm here at the property, and I just want to do a quick little video, I've got a couple little things I want to share with you, just a couple of little updates. I've got a few more measurements for the inside of the Incredit Cottage. Someone had a great suggestion about using tape to uh, draw out basically the size of the floor, so I kind of give you a visual representation of what different size beds would fit in there. So I think it would be very helpful for you, and or really for anybody looking to go into a tiny space. This bedroom, I think, is about seven feet wide. Well, you'll see in, in later in the video, but you'll get a pretty good idea for about how much space you've got to put a bed and the kind of different options that you've got and what kind of gives you what's left after the bed's in there. So that tape on the floor will give you a good representation. Also want to share with you a little bit about solar panels and all. Now that the sun is higher up in the sky as we're getting closer and closer to the summer solstice, uh, you know, before the sun was real low in the sky, now it's, it's getting up there pretty good. And you can now tell I had to adjust the solar panel angles in order to better get a better, uh, you know, angle on the sun. Also, the trees have now started blooming. So the tree, the, just literally this month, all of a sudden the, uh, the leaves started popping out like crazy. And now it's got some really nice shade. As you can see, these two tiny houses in the shade underneath here in phase two at the very front of the property. Those are going to be the Airbnb spots. And um, but you can basically see how the panels actually have a little bit of shade on them as well. And I've already moved them out about uh, 15, 20 feet further from the house to make sure they'd have enough sun through the day to keep those batteries charged and be able to run the AC and all that kind of stuff on there until we finish up here with phase two infrastructure which we are working on now, and we hope to get that done here pretty soon. Also, very exciting news, we've got a couple of the first tiny houses from Incredible Tiny Homes coming onto the property. Not just these here in the front that are just kind of displays, but I've actually got some residence homes coming to the property here in the next few weeks into phase one. So we're very excited about that. Uh, of course, we'll have video of all that and just kind of show you those homes coming here, hopefully capture all that on film. And um, a lot of other cool things I'm gonna be showing to you in the next few weeks and all, lots going on. So anyway, without further ado, let me, let's uh, go ahead and talk some more about the solar panel situation here. All right, so I'm a little bit more zoomed in here, close to the solar, to the solar panels. I just want to help those people kind of understand a little bit more how solar works and kind of what you have to do or, you know, to kind of understand how well it's going to work for you. Again, on this property, it's going to be a little bit tough because there are some shade trees. And as that sun gets higher in the sky, that shade is going to be directly overhead, the homes and the areas below them. So uh, on the north side of the property, you get a little bit of sun uh, because it's coming from the south part of the sky. But still, uh, you are going to get some shade, especially if the, the panels are mounted on top of your home. Um, you may not get much power from them at all. And so let me explain to you a little bit more how this works. So again, I'm going I'm to demonstrate for you what the panels, the angle that the panels were at in the wintertime. It's going to give you an idea of kind of where they need to be in the wintertime to get the maximum amount of uh, energy produced. They were about this high, this, this steep of an angle. So you can kind of see that unless your roof is really steep, you're not going to be producing much power in the, uh, the winter months with an angle, you know, closer down here like this. However, in the, uh, and this is probably a closer angle to what the uh, a, a tiny house roof is going to be for most of them. So if your roof is facing the south in the summertime and you got sun, then you'll produce the maximum amount of power that these panels will allow you to produce. But if your home is sideways, so you're not facing south, but you're facing, you know, the the panels are facing east and west. You're only going to produce either sun in the in this in the morning hours or in the or in the afternoon hours. So a couple of different things to kind of be prepared for. And if your home's in the shade in the summertime when the leaves kind of start coming out, then you're not going to produce hardly any power at all. But even on those days when it is cloudy, you still do produce a little bit of power, not much, but still it, it will trickle in a little bit. But um, I have a little gauge here. I'm going to show you again how the angle is different based on the sun. All right, this little gauge is really cool. Um, what it does is there's a little black dot right in the center. So if you're directly overhead, that's ideal. Right there, if we were the sun looking straight on, you'd be producing 100% maximum power. But you can see where the shadow is, and that's where the actual sun is located. So you can, there's different bands. So this one says that we're 30 degrees off of center. And that's because it's a little bit later in the afternoon. So if it was uh, totally lined up, it'd be more vertical in line with that uh, that. Uh, line going side by side. Let me turn sideways here. So if it was more lined up, it's there. So there's a dot in the middle and there's the shadow on the right hand side. So it's on the 30 degree mark. So it's because it's later in the afternoon. So unless you're moving your panels all day, every hour, every 30 minutes, you're going to, that's, that's going to move around a little bit. You're still going to produce a lot of power, but if you want to be perfect, again, you want to get that black dot in the center to match where that black dot is in the shadow right in the middle. So it's a pretty little, little pretty cool little tool. It just clips right on, nothing to it really. This one's made by uh, EcoFlow that goes with these panels and the solar generator that I have. And again, if you want more information on solar and how to do your own solar, 
I've got a video that I created about it. If you want, if you don't have panels in your home, you want a third party solution. I've got some, some pretty good options that I've found that seem to work pretty good. But anyway, this is a really cool little device. All you do is just kind of clip it on there. It's like 20 bucks and it will help you angle your panel. So again, if you just pick your panel up, if I get out of the sun here, you can watch that shadow and it starts to move. So, you know, I tilt it from left to right, it would actually go more in the center. It's just because it's afternoon now. Otherwise, that dot would be pretty close to the center. So that's what you really want. It's kind of be within that 10, 20, 30 degrees mark. If you're up, if you're further than that away, you're just going to be producing less power. So that's just just good little tool, cheap tool, 20 bucks. Going to help you see different times of the year, different times of the day, how much, you know, how close you are angled onto your, uh, onto your solar panels. And I'll, I'll, I'll provide a link for this in the description down below. So go ahead and click on that link down there. You can learn more about it, how it works, and you can get one. Again, if you have solar panels on your roof, it'd be kind of cool to clip one of these on there and you can just jump up on a ladder and look, you know, different times of the day and, and uh, different times of the year to kind of see, you know, how close are your, how, how well aligned your panels are with the sun. So I hope that kind of helps give you, give you an idea. Again, from the side here, let me show you kind of the tilts. So this was the angle before. In the wintertime, that was working really well, where that dot was right in the middle. And of course now, right here, pretty low to the ground, less than 30 degrees probably, is uh, much better to getting that dot in the circle. So it's real easy. You just kind of adjust the way I've got it set up. You've got little screws right here, and you can just adjust those as you need to, as you want to. And you can get that dot more lined up to get you generating more power. Because you only got about six hours a day on a, on a sunny day or whatever, on average. So you kind of want to maximize that power. So you're producing as much power from these panels per day as possible. So that's a little bit, little bit of an update there on the, on the solar power for you. So I want to share with you guys that we're thinking about coming to the property and putting some solar panels in. That's something you can kind of think about. Some options if you've got them roof mounted. As you can see, they'd be in the shade right there on the RJO and for the cottage. So having them mounted on the floor here like this, a third party option in certain locations on this property would give you uh, some solar power. Again, pretty much only the south, the south phase two lots and the north uh, phase two lots. The south phase two lots again with the Airbnbs, primary, or not primarily, but if you want an Airbnb, it has to be on the south side only. So most of those will be probably Airbnbs, but there is you know, a good amount, good amount of space right here. Of course, you're gonna have the pickleball court over here and stuff. And so this, this is probably the sunniest part of the property. But um, anyway, electricity is not very expensive in Alabama anyway. It's, you know, 10 cents a kilowatt hour, and these tiny homes are very efficient, so you're not going to worry too much about using, using a whole lot of power. So is, I don't know if it's really worth paying the extra, you know, five ten thousand $10,000 for a roof-mounted system, just my general opinion. Um, you know, paying a couple thousand dollars for a, a, a uh, portable system like this that you can put on the floor, or you can have a backup battery and kind of move it around, take it with you, go camping. That maybe is a, is a backup option, but you don't want to rely on it 100% because, first of all, it doesn't, it's not sunny every day. Even though we get a lot of sun here in Alabama, we do get rain, of course, once, twice a week sometimes. We get clouds, but it's generally pretty sunny. But uh, in the summertime, we're going to have a lot of these trees shading up, which is going to be good. You'll be grateful for it because it can get a little bit warm here. And having that shade in the summertime, it sure is nice. You'll be able to sit on your porch and just kind of watch the water in the shade. That's ideal. So anyway, just a quick little update there on the solar situation. All right, quickly, we are back here in the kitchen of the Incredit Cottage here on site at the, at the Cottage of Pine Lake. And I had a few suggestions that people had in the comments section of the prior video, and there were some good ones. So I want to go ahead and uh, act on those suggestions. One viewer had a question that I totally just totally missed was the measurement for where the microwave goes on top of the uh, vent there. So the hood vent. So I'm going to go ahead and take those measurements real quick. And as you can see, I've got three different colored tapes. Someone had a great suggestion to uh, basically tape off the section in the bedroom there so you kind of get a better visual understanding and visual seeing, visual sight, visual image, visual imagery of uh, what, what it would feel like, uh, what, what it, of what it would look like to have different size beds in that room. And I thought tape was a good idea because you can see exactly on the floor and get a better feel for, you know, if this home is going to be big enough for you or what size bed you might want or need uh, and have space for in an incredible cottage. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going for you. First, let me uh, go ahead and measure this for you before I forget. So on top here, You've got a depth to the edge of just over 11 inches. And the width inside is just right at 24 inches. All right, so 11 inches deep, 24 inches wide. And um, not that it really matters here, but if you want to see how tall it is until you get to the top there, it's roughly 17 and a half inches there. So, and this microwave, like I said, sticks out a little bit. This one 
sticks out about an uh, inch and a half. And um, this particular microwave is 17 inches wide and it's pushed up all the way back and it's about 12 inches deep. And it is about 10 inches high. So to kind of give you an idea. So you want a, a, one that's a little bit shallower and it can be wider as well, it would work be better up here. Of course, one other thing you could do as well is just put another board on top of this so that board sticks out over the edge. You know, it would kind of be in front of your uh, controls here a little bit, but that is an option if you have one that's much bigger than that. It would still fit up there because it's definitely plen plenty wide, plenty tall, just a little bit shallow. You can always pull that whole thing out if you wanted to as well. But uh, anyway, and the hood vent, if you're kind of concerned, you want to know as well, we did measure this, so let's go ahead and measure that. It sticks out 17 and a half inches from the wall. And of course the hood vent uh, from inside or from outside to outside is 25 and a half with that trim on there. All right, and the clearance, let's go ahead and measure that too. You're about 21 and a quarter inches off the cooktop uh, for the clearance between that and the, and the, uh, the hood vent. And uh, your black splash here is uh, 17 inches tall and 25 and a half inches wide as well. All right, now let's go ahead and get to the favorite part of the Incredible Cottage, at least my favorite part, which is the view. Look at that view. And today it's raining. It's actually the day after the eclipse here. And look at that cool view. Back here, my favorite view. It's just beautiful outside. You can see the rain on the window. It's raining outside right now. Imagine sitting right here in your bed, looking out at the lake, just watching it rain. How peaceful is that? You have you know, a cup of tea cup of hot chocolate, cup of coffee, whatever. It's curled up in a nice book right here, just looking out there. Imagine having like a little fireplace on the wall, one of those electric fireplaces. You got that kind of crackling in the background and you're just sitting there watching, watching the rain come down. Anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get these measurements for you. So hold on one second. All right, just to quickly give you a, a glimpse of what it would look like if you put the bed horizontal or parallel to the, the back bay window there. Then uh, here's the three different sizes. You got a queen size bed is in blue, green is the full size bed, and the white would be the single size bed. And here's the actual dimensions for you. If you want a closer view. So there's your queen, 60 by 80, full is 54 by 75, and a single, 38 by 74. So if you zoom back out, you can see the queen bed would match with all you could fit in here, basically be wall to wall. And the full and the twin would be a little bit off the wall, but not by much, but it would dig you a little bit more space in here. Now I'm going to turn this around and if we put the bed against that wall over there and see how much space you've got and compare that to uh, opening the closet, see how much space you have putting the, uh, the bed that way. Okay. So here we go. We've got a nice design on the floor now. And uh, again, the blue is the queen. The green is the full size and the beige, the white is the single. So again, we saw what we had before. If you're looking at putting the bed sideways so that it's basically against that wall there, the queen size bed, let me try and pull those other ones out of the, make it so it's not confusing here again. Like I showed you in the previous picture or video, the blue is the queen. So the queen size bed will be basically from wall to wall and you'd have about six inches before you entered the room. Then you've got the green is the full size. You'd have a little bit of space there on the front. The single is about the same length. It's just a little bit, quite a bit narrower, so you have much more space to work with. Now, if you look at the other direction, we'll go from this angle here. Now you can kind of see the floor, the closet space there on the floor, and the queen, you can see you actually have, um, so you come at 50 inches, so you've got you know about 20 inches or so of space where you can actually put something here on this side of the wall now. So we'll go from this perspective, you can kind of see you've got, you've got a little bit of a room to work with now, so you could put a TV, you could hang a TV on that wall right there if you like, or put a little very narrow table or desk right there, or a bureau, armoire. And then, but if you put it on this side over here, you know, if you put a full size, you can see the green right there. So here's the full size, right? Going from that direction, you have even more space between this wall right here. And there again, the single, you'd have a whole lot of space right here. So if you had a single bed, I would imagine you probably want to put it against that wall like that to create the most space here against this nice little wood wall here. Or put it on that side of the wall too, either way, but probably I would imagine on that side. Uh, full size bed, again, frees you up quite a bit of space there. Um, from here to there, you're looking at uh, from you know, 54 to I believe is 80 inches. So you've got you know 26 inches there to work with a little over two feet. So you have a good space there where you could sit on the edge of the bed and still be able to have your legs 
you know, and have some, some foot space to kind of just get out of the bed. Now let's see the closet. The closet, you can open the closet fully. It'd just be kind of hard if you had the queen size bed this direction to get your foot past it. So it'd be hard to walk past it, but keep it closed. And you can kind of reach in here and get, you know, with one door open if you need to, if you have a queen size bed. But you put the queen size bed the other direction where, you, where it's, you know, uh, parallel to that back window, then you've got quite a bit of space. In fact, I can tell you, you've got from 60 inches to about 83. So you've got 23 inches worth of space right there where you can sit on the end of the bed and your feet hang off, and you've got plenty of space there you know, to, before you hit the door. So it just kind of depends. If you want to use this closet with the doors on there and you want a paint size bed, you've got some thinking to do. Otherwise, if you've got a single or a full size bed, you're going to have a lot more options with additional furniture you can put in the room, things like that. So one last little view all the way around. Again, this is maybe a little more detail than some people wanted, but for those of you who are buying any credit cottage, this may be very useful, very helpful information. So I'm just gonna try and get it to you on this video here. Just have to let other people know if they have questions about the credit cottage and what you can put in this master bedroom. This is pretty exhaustive. So there you go. All right. All right, and back to my favorite view here of the lake with the rain and all. One last thing I wanna to talk to you about, let's talk about the lots. As, as you know, we are making available the phase two lots right now. They're under construction. They are, we're working on them right now, putting the infrastructure in and getting those ready to go. But uh, we still have one phase one lot. Uh, a situation came up where someone who had a phase one lot wasn't able to uh, go through with it. It's, you know, life change situations took place. So therefore, we have one more lot available in phase one for $10,000, which will save you $5,000 if you're looking to get on the lake. That's the cheapest way you'll be able to get out of here. $10,000 key money for a phase one uh, forest lot, um, which again, those lots are ready to go. Um, those will be the first homes that are coming on the property here in a few weeks time. We'll be going out there to phase one. We have one lot left there in the forest, phase one, $10,000 key money. So go ahead and give me a call or, or easiest way really is through email. I can respond a lot faster that way. Support at gotinybefree.com. Again, that's support at gotinybefree.com. And email me if you're interested in that situation. And if they're still available by the time you see this message, email me right away and I'll let you know what you need to do to go ahead and secure that lot, which is to go ahead and buy a tiny house. And then that will be an option for you, that $10,000 lot here at the cottages at Pine Lake. Um, but again, phase two lots are also available on the lake, which you can have a nice view like this. Those are $15,000 for key money. For all the details, be sure to go to gotinycottages.com. That's gotinycottages.com. But if you want that phase one lot while it still is available, email me, support at gotinybefree.com, and I'll let you know how you can go ahead and get that secured uh, with a new tiny house purchase. All right? All right, well, that's all for this video. We got much more video in the can. Again, I've got a lot of footage here I need to put together. It's just taking a lot of time, but I'll get it out to you. So be looking forward to that footage of kind of seeing the infrastructure going in and all the workers, and there's a lot of stuff going on here on the property. And uh, again, I'm excited too to have those first couple homes finally coming into phase one. And once we get those first six homes in there in that first part of phase one, we're going to you know, landscape it and get it real nice. And it's going to become basically the showcase for this property and for other properties like it to kind of help people really get a feel for what's it going to be like. What's it going to be like living here on the property? So those first six people, uh, they're going to be super excited. They already are. We've been in contact with them. They're getting their deliveries all lined up and getting everything situated. There's a lot to do. Also, another thing I want to let people know, I am putting together a resource for people so that for those of you who have purchased a property here at the Cottage of Pine Lake, or a home to go on this property, I should say, I'm gonna to put together some resources to help you with that transition process. So it'll be like a web page or something. It's gonna have kind of a list of things you wanna be thinking about, um, some resources that maybe, you know, some phone, some phone numbers you might need to have on hand, some things you wanna call, some things you might wanna line up to kind of help you with this transition process. Things you may not have thought about, things you might need to start organizing. And we'll be, it'll be a, a collaborative thing. We'll be adding stuff, taking stuff away to it. People will be suggesting things to it. So, but I wanna give you some resource so you're not just thinking like, well, what do I do now? Bought my house, it's ready to go you know, what do I need to do? And of course, you know, moving, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big deal. You got to pare down, you got to move, you got to line things up, you got to change your mail. So we're going to detail that for you so that you don't forget something. And, um, you know, so that'll be another resource we'll be providing for you here soon as the next, as the first couple of homes start coming on the property. So lots more to come, lots more things happening here and uh, real exciting, but here's the Incredit Cottage. That's going to be an Airbnb here on the property coming soon. So that's it for this video. Hans Shaw from the Cottage at Pine Lake. Go to GoTinyCottages.com for more information. Go Tiny, be free.